Welcome to Truth Unbound. I'm Walter Swaim, and we are back after a short lull. Uh, I am uh, going through a change of ministries, if you will, and even physical locations. So I appreciate your patience as there might be a little more space in between our podcasts as uh, I'm going through these ministry transitions, but it's exciting and challenging and looking forward to it. And the main change is that uh, I am now with Louisiana Baptist University and Theological Seminary. Now, uh, this is based in Shreveport, Louisiana. And from time to time now, uh, if not every podcast, uh, you'll hear me advertise this. And uh, I am the academic dean and would like to invite you to consider... Uh, going into your next area of study or next step of study, whether it be a certificate or a biblical studies or a bachelor's or a master's or a doctorate. Uh, so contact me at info at truthunbound.org, okay? And we'll talk more about that in the future, but uh, I hope that you'll contact me about that and take the next step in your calling and service to the Lord to be better equipped to do so. All right. So here on uh, here at Truth Unbound, today I'm doing something I've never done before and will rarely, rarely do in the future. But because of the circumstance that's happening in the world right now, it's extremely relative. I wouldn't change a thing. And, uh, and that is that Hamas, just two days ago, attacked Israel. This is their, Israel's 9-11, if you will. And hundreds and hundreds of Israelis, uh, innocent Israelis, have been killed. And uh, the question arises, why is Israel favored by the Lord, or chosen by the Lord, if you will, and why... Uh, it is that we as evangelicals or Christians, followers of Christ, support Israel in a general sense. So today's podcast is one that I did uh, in my early days, so you'll see the difference. <laughs> Please don't make fun of it. Um, but anyway, but the information is there, and I think it will be engaging for you. So please don't forget that uh, if you like this, uh, this uh, podcast, make sure to uh, click on like here on YouTube and hit all notifications so you'll know when the latest episode comes out and can tell others about it. And then also if you would uh, click to subscribe uh, and or to follow the podcast, whether it's the video or audio version, and then also uh, share the link of this podcast to everyone you can today, especially with the urgency of as to what is happening and how Christians should respond biblically to what is happening to Israel. So without further ado, we're going to proceed, listen in well, watch well, and uh, I look forward to seeing some of your comments and replies, and let's get to it right now. Hey, I'm so glad that you chose to join us here at Truth Unbound. Again, I'm your host, uh, Walter Swaim, and we're going to get right into the subject at hand. Uh, the question was this, is why does Israel receive such historically long, faithful, and strong support from evangelical Christians in the West, especially in the United States? Well, here are the biblical reasons why we do. The first reason we do is it's a biblical reason. In fact, they're all from the scriptures, and that's plain reading. Uh, let me point out to you here, and this is one of the key verse and the foundational verse of everything that we have to talk about concerning uh, Christian support of Israel. And that is right here in Genesis chapter 12 and verses 1 through 3. He says, Now the Lord had said to Abram, Get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. You see, the first reason is because of a literal rendering of the scriptures that tells us specifically here concerning the land that God was going to give Israel uh, and that it occupies in part today um, is the land that God originally gave to them was not only for then, but also to the Jewish people forever uh, and ever. And so this is one reason why we support this. And look again, he says here, uh, let me point it out to you one more time. He says, look, he says, get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. He makes it clear here that this is what he intends to give them. 
In fact, also look over in Genesis chapter 15, sometime later, God describes for them what land that he intends to give them. He actually tells them, describes the boundaries of the land that is going to be theirs eventually. It says here in Genesis chapter 15, verses 18 through 21, on the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram saying, to your descendants, I have given this land from the river of Egypt to the great river, the river Euphrates, the Kenites, the Kenizzites, the Cadmonites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Rephaim, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Girgashites, and, and uh, the Jebusites. And so we have a good idea generally of where each of these, uh, these lands, these nations, these tribes uh, occupied in the, uh, in the Middle East. And so now we can draw a picture even of what that looks like. All right, so in this graphic right here that I'm going to bring to you, you can see a map clearly as to where Israel's border uh, is today, right here where I'm showing the little indicator um, and where Israel is at. And uh, also by the red lines, we see what the actual land, as described in Genesis chapter 15, uh, the actual land, the outline of the actual broader land that is really Israel's given to uh, Israel by God. And so that draws us a picture clearly of what God was giving to Israel then and forevermore for the kingdom of Israel to be established under God's authority. But you see, it's more than just a piece of land, no matter how big it is. There's more to the promise that God gave Israel, and it's another reason why evangelical Christians who honor the, the plain, literal reading of the Word of God, why evangelical Christians like that support Israel so strongly. Here's reason number two. It's right here uh, for us, right in Genesis chapter 3, and this time we're going to read specifically verse 3. It says, I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. The second point and the second reason why uh, evangelical Christians by and large support Israel as a nation, as the people of God, is that God promised that those nations that mistreat Israel will themselves be cursed by God, no matter who they are. Now, this promise right here contained in Genesis chapter 3 from God to Israel uh, has not been withdrawn. There is not one verse in any of the rest of the Bible that indicates that God has rescinded or taken away this promise to them. It remains. And today this verse still stands. And any nation, including the United States, uh, it is advantageous to any nation to be friendly to Israel. Israel itself has aided dozens and dozens of nations throughout the years and even to this very day around the world. They have helped them with medical aid. They have helped them with irrigation systems, even down into Africa, uh, water management. Uh, they have helped a disaster relief in aid with technology and more. Uh, they have helped numerous of nations across the world. Um, and this also means that Israel uh, has a right to defend itself and to defend itself decisively when attacked by nations who seek their very destruction. Look at what God says here further down in the Old Testament through the prophet Jeremiah. In Jeremiah chapter 30 and in verse 3, he says, For, for behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that I will bring back cap, uh, from captivity my people Israel and Judah, says the Lord, and I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. And so this third reason, based on Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse 3 and numerous other scriptures that we don't have the time to cover in this podcast, and that is that it is a prophetic reason. In other words, God's promise for what is still to come in the future. In other words, God clearly, number three is this, that God clearly will fully restore the land to Israel uh, when he returns and when he establishes his literal uh, millennial kingdom reign from Jerusalem himself physically there reigning from there over all the world. 
Now, we have already seen partial fulfillment of this happen, of Israel returning to the land uh, that God had gave them originally thousands of years ago. When Israel re became a nation again in 1947, right after World War II, uh, and were given this land uh, that was theirs already by heritage, we recognize this as a partial fulfillment of Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 3. And so when you put these three reasons together, you can see why we as believers who believe in the Bible and the truth of God's word have a, such a love for the people of Israel, for the Jewish people, regardless of if that love is returned to us or not. Uh, it is a love for the Jews in obedience to God and his word and his plan for the ages. The first thing that this love and support for Israel does not mean is this. Some evangelicals, especially many from the Reformed or what it would be called the New or Neo-Reformed camp, take a different slant to the end time prophecies, uh, rejecting their literal obvious meaning, saying that Israel is replaced entirely by the church and that those promises no longer apply to Israel, but to the church itself uh, entirely. Uh, and that or and or that these prophecies were fulfilled already in the past and the, God's plan for the church is different uh, in the future and Israel has no more plan, uh, has no more place in the plan of God in the future. Uh, the actual view that comes, though, from the plain and simple reading of Scripture is that as far as a worldwide influence to point people to God through Jesus, Israel especially do and mainly due to their rejection of Jesus, the Son of God, as their king and as their Messiah and as their prophet, priest and king, uh, has been set aside temporarily uh, by God in uniting Jew and Gentile together as the church. And the church is now his new vehicle or has been since the, the, the death of Christ and his resurrection and his ascension in the beginning of the church, as we see in Acts, uh, the beginning of the book of Acts, that the church is been, has now been given the task of what Israel was supposed to do, which was to be a light to the world and to draw people to God. Now he has brought us together, those Jews and those Gentiles who repent of their sin and believe in Jesus by faith, uh, have therefore the task now to not just attract the world to God, but to go out into the world with his gospel message. And we are united as one people uh, in God through being the church. But this does, does not negate God's political and spiritual plans for Israel. He still wants to call a remnant out from Israel uh, during the period of what is described as the tribulation, the great tribulation, when God will judge the world for those seven years. The church will already be in heaven, but God's going to be dealing with Israel and with the entire world with heavy judgment. Uh, and those spiritual plans for Israel uh, and literal plans still have to be fulfilled in the future. Uh, for now, the church takes center stage and does the job of getting the message of God's love and salvation through Jesus out to the world. So what we understand is that Israel and church are two different entities in the spiritual and, and literal plans of God for the future in prophecy. And he has used them and will continue to use them in respective ways uh, to glorify himself and to bring as many to salvation in Jesus as possible. A second thing that this love and support for Israel based on the biblical meaning of what's going on with Israel and how God has described it. This is, there's a second reason uh, or a second thing that it does not mean. And that is that anything and everything Israel does politically or even militarily is just blindly endorsed and promoted by Christians. That is not what this means. We love and support Israel because of the plans that God has for them. But God has judged Israel because of its systematic oh, disobedience to God and for the rejection of Jesus Christ as prophet, priest, and king, as we said before, and as their Messiah. In fact, today, most Israelis are very liberal in their thinking. They reject Jesus still, and uh, they are still trying to live, uh, many of them by the law, uh, and many of them are, are intermarried with those who are non-Jewish, and so uh, it, they are liberal spiritually, politically even in many ways, uh, and stand in rejection of Jesus Christ, his King and Lord. And they will continue to be dealt uh, in a judgment way by God. Yet this does not change the overall work of God in and through Israel in the future uh, to accomplish his purposes. 
in the end, we are still to support what God does and to love what God does. And God loves Israel and God's going to work through Israel. Just as he's, going, he's working now through the church in the future, he's going to call a remnant out through those years of judgment upon Israel and the world, those seven years in the tribulation period. And he is going to work through them actually to see many others come to Christ as Lord and Savior through Jewish people that will go out into the world, that 144,000 from all 12 tribes, and they will preach the gospel to the world. And so God loves Israel. Paul shared the same burden for Israel's salvation, repentance and salvation and faith in Jesus in Romans chapters 9 through 11, especially. And therefore, just as Paul, we also love Israel and we want to see Israel come to Christ as Lord and Savior. We are to evangelize the Jew. We are to share the gospel with them, to show Jesus as their Savior and as their Messiah and Lord, and that they must put their faith in him alone to be saved. Israel is still special to God and therefore Israel is special to us, his people, the church. And we will support them. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem as it says to do in the book of Psalms. We pray for their protection. We, su we strongly support them and for their right to defend themselves against their enemies and for the nation to repent of its sin and turn to Jesus as Messiah and also for the Palestinian people to come to Christ as Lord and Savior. And those two, as is already seen in many parts over there already, that Israelis and, and, and Palestinians who have come to Jesus are one in Christ, and they are a part of the church, his body. Well, I hope that brings you to a better and clearer understanding. Make sure to like this video also to subscribe to this channel and then share this with everyone you can invite others to come and know more about Jesus, about his word, about his truth, and about his love through this ministry, Truth Unbound. And remember, if you follow Jesus, you'll follow the truth.